Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with another Gadget Friday. And man, have I got a cool piece of technology for you today. Now, it shouldn't be that big a surprise because it's sitting right here on the table in front of me and it's a board game. And you might already be thinking, Rick, you're a nerd. It's a high-tech channel. How are you getting so excited over a board game? It looks pretty simple. And that's where you'd be wrong because there was so much high-tech built into this game that I couldn't wait to talk about it on the channel. Now, before I get into the technology, let me tell you what comes with the game. So it's a game called Smart 4 from our friends over at Geiker, and it includes the Smart Game Board and these incredibly intelligent cubes, which I'll get into in a little bit. You'll find an instruction manual, a quick start guide, an FCC certification, and a charging cable. Now you might already be thinking, what's with the charging cable? It's a USB-A to USB-C. That should give you a clue that there's something magical going on inside that game board. It's artificially intelligent, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But the game itself is fascinating because when I first started playing it, it was pretty simple. And I love board games. You can see board games all around us. Uh, our kids are older now. My son's uh, in college. My daughter's in New York City. So when they left the house, we had the kids' room. And we kind of turned that into our game room because we're a little bit older and we like to relax in the evenings playing games. We tore up the carpet, put some paint on the walls, put up some new shelves. And every night after a long day, we'll come in here, sit down, and play a couple of games just to relax after a long day of flying the drone and answering emails or whatever went on that day. It's just a great way for us to relax. And we love playing board games. So we play a lot of board games. We play a ton of different games. And it's interesting because... We're different, my wife and I, when we play these games. It's very relaxing, but I tend, on a new game, I tend to come out of the gate pretty strong where I'm really good at it right out of the gate. And my wife is a genius, so she sits back. She may lose a couple, but she's learning every game. She's getting better every game. Now, I hope she doesn't watch this clip because I'm going to deny all of this. But anyway, long term, she's going to win. So she's in for the long game. I tend to be really good, and then I get really bad. So alongside of me, I've got a bunch of games that we still play and we'll break them out every night. There's a big shelf over there, which I call the dead shelf, which are all the games that we just didn't like that much or games that she's clobbering me at and I won't play her again. So I'll put them back on that shelf over there. But anyway, this game, when it first showed up, seemed incredibly simple. And I thought to myself, okay, we'll play it a couple of times. I may not play it again. Let's just play it and see how it goes. And really the basic concept behind the game is you've got to put four blocks of the same color in a row. Now it seems really, really simple, but it's diabolically complex. And I'll explain why in a second, because we as creatures are two dimensional creatures. So we tend to think of X and Y axis. So when you're playing checkers, you got a game board, you're looking down at it and you can see from the top exactly what's going on. So to line up four pieces in a row in a two dimensional board is not that complicated. This is a three dimensional game. So you can line up four pieces across, straight up, straight up in the air, or even an angle up in the air. So right away, you've gone from sort of linear thinking to orthogonal thinking or dimensional thinking, which is a big leap for most of us creatures out there. And, and the reason I love it so much is if you have young kids, everything seems to be sort of a bilateral, two-dimensional world where they're solving problems, there's math. The creative side comes out from that spatial awareness. So an engineer will look at something and his mind, in my mind, I'll spin it around in 3D, I'll get a chance to look at it in three dimensions. And that's because I tend to think in those kind of spatial terms. Most people don't, they think in two degree terms or two dimensional terms. So having a, a game like this that forces you into the third dimension really adds the intrigue. So when you're playing somebody, even if it wasn't electronic, the ability to sort of have four in a row this way, four straight up, four in an angle like this is incredibly complex. So when you're playing the game, initially, I'll show you a couple of moves in a minute of how you can get started quick. So if you buy the game and you want to play somebody, I'll give you some hints on how you can win. But once you get past that first stage where it, where it sort of is boring until you figure out there are strategies to go into third dimension, and that's when it gets incredibly interesting. So with my wife and I, this game has not left the table. And, and just playing it as a game, we play every night, and I'll win one, she'll win five, and then I'll just call it a night. Anyway, so beyond that, the game itself is intelligent. And what I mean by that is these blocks are magnetic. So when you put them down and you push the board, the little ring below it will light up. So it lets you know where the last piece was played. But more importantly, beyond being magnetic, there's inductors inside here, some type of inductive technology. And I'm really tempted to crack one of these open and take a look inside, but I won't because I need all the pieces. But I, I suspect that there's inductors and magnets in there that are letting it know this is a black cube and this is a white cube. But here's the interesting thing. The technology will read the cubes in order this way. So it knows when you're playing the game, if you win the game, and if you didn't even realize you won, it'll make a sound and let you know you've won the game. And it's so complex that it can keep track of a stack of cubes like this and know the order of white, white, black, white on that particular spot relative to all the other spots in the game. So the artificial intelligence inside there, just keeping track of that is a programming nightmare. And then beyond it, I can play a player, like I'll play my wife at night. I can also play the computer. 
Now, there are three settings, and there's two games built into this. This is the, the four-in-a-row game. There's another one called Lights Out, where you shut out a bunch of lights. And I'll show you how to play both of those games in a second. But what's cool about it is I can play my wife. I can also play the computer, and there are three hard settings for playing this game against the computer. Now, easy, you're probably going to beat it after a couple of games. Medium, it's going to be a heck of a challenge. If you beat it at medium and go to hard, I've yet to beat it at hard. And I'll tell you one thing that's interesting. Sometimes when it's time to play the games, I'll be in the office finishing up editing a clip or something, and I'll say, I'll be in there in a minute, and then when I walk in, she's playing the computer. So I know she's sharpening her skills by playing the computer, but I don't think she's beaten it at expert yet, but it's an incredibly challenging game. So I can sit down, if she's not home and I'm just bored and I want to get some brain food going, I can play the game and play against the computer. That would be cool enough if it was just a two-player game and a computer game, but you connect it to your phone over Bluetooth, you open up the application, and you can sort of play against players elsewhere in the world that have that game that happened to be online at that time. So totally anonymous, but I can start the game, link, link online, find somebody in Finland who wants to play the game. They're in Finland, I'm in Jersey, and we're playing the game against each other. So it's internet connected, it's Bluetooth connected to your phone. It also keeps statistics of how your games are being played so you can improve your gameplay. So everything about this game started off as a basic two-dimensional, I'm gonna say kind of boring, because again, a two-dimensional game where you gotta get four in a row, two adults sitting against each other, you're gonna try different strategies, it's gonna end as a tie. But a three-dimensional game, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, and that's what makes it so wicked. And again, I think back to my kids when they were growing up, how you play a lot of two-dimensional things and you think in terms of two dimensions, but that third dimension really blows things out of proportion. And that's an important concept to get through to younger people as you grow up, and even older guys like me, that you have to exercise those muscles in your brain to have that three-dimensional awareness. And one of the I'll mention too, and this is a great book if you haven't read it, it's called Flatland. And I'm sure you've read it, but if you haven't, check that book out because that is a conceptual book that will explain two-dimensional worlds versus three-dimensional worlds. And I think, I had my kids read it, and I, I think that really helps you sort of expand your mind a little bit. But anyway, I'm getting a little off track. All right, so next what I'm going to do is show you how the game plays, and then I'll come back with some final thoughts because I'm really jazzed about this product, and I know I don't normally uh, review board games on the channel, and this is probably the only one I'll ever review, but I just love the technology. I love that somebody sat down and thought, we're going to build a game with four in a row, three-dimensional, we're going to build intelligence inside of it so we can constantly beat the person that's playing it, and we're going to connect it to the internet and let other players all over the world play you. I just love it. I think it's fantastic. So anyway, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to play the game, then I'll come back with some final thoughts. To initialize the game, you'll hold down the center tile for a couple of seconds, and you'll see the lights start to rotate. And once they finish, you can make your selection. Now, if you decide you want to play solo against the computer to improve your skills, you can play either Lights Out or Connect Four. And these are the difficulty levels. So easy, medium, and hard, easy, medium, and hard. So if you'd like to play Lights Out in easy mode, tap that button and the game will start and you'll be playing against the computer. Same thing on Connect Four, easy, medium, and hard, tap that and you're in easy mode against the computer. Now, my recommendation is always start off in easy mode because the artificial intelligence built into this product is wicked smart and it's going to beat you pretty much every time, even on easy mode. But the good thing is, You'll learn. You'll learn patterns and ways to defend things, and you'll be much better when you go to head-to-head -head mode against somebody else. But if you want to start off in head-to-head -head mode, tap that button. That will activate the board, and it'll start keeping track of where the black pieces are placed and where the white pieces are placed, and it'll let you know who won. So I'll hit that, and let's pretend, for example, I'm playing my wife, and she's on that side, I'm on this side, and we've done our rock, paper, scissors, and for some reason I've won, which is rare for me, and I get to go first. I'll place my first piece on the board, and again, it's magnetic, so it sticks right where I put it, and I have to tap it. And that lets the board know I've put a black block right there in the center. Now my wife gets to go. Let's pretend she goes there, and I decide, well, you know what, I'm going to go over here. And if she misses that and goes here, I've already won the game, because my next move is going to be here, and like I said before, there's a technique you can use. If you can get three in a row, she can't possibly defend both of these ends at the same time. So no matter what she does at this point, I've won the game. And that's not going to happen a lot. It may happen a lot when you first start playing it, but that's the challenge of having a two-dimensional game versus a three-dimensional game. So let's say, for example, she tries to block me here. It's not going to matter because I'll go right here. There's my four in a row. And you hear that sound? That lets you know you won. And again, it may seem very simple in a two-dimensional game to give you that indication. But once you get into the third dimension and start building up, it gets it's a lot more complex. All right, so to reset the game, you basically tap that center button again, and it's going to start the game over. So you have the same choice as you had before. Let me start it again, just show you how you can get a three-dimensional going. So if I start off and I put my first piece there, and she puts a piece there, maybe I put a piece here, and she puts another piece there, and she decides, you know what, Rick, you're not going to beat me again. I'm going to, I'm going to put my piece here, and she's going to block me and put a piece there. So you can spend a lot of time figuring out how this is going to end up. But in essence, I've got to defend in three dimensions at the same time. So if I decide I'm going to go here, 
and she decides, okay, I'm going to go here, I'll put a second piece, and then she'll put a piece over here maybe to build out this direction. If I go here, now I've got three. See these three steps already up? And she decides, oh, she's going to be clever and go up like that, and I'll block her here, and maybe she'll put a third one thinking she's going to go straight up in the air. The minute I put the fourth piece on top, I've now built a staircase where I've got one, two, three, and here's four. So I went in that direction, and that's where it gets really complex because once you start filling up the board, there's all kinds of three-dimensional angles that you can be playing in this direction, that direction, up. And, and again, you could even stack four up like this. I could have four straight up like that, which is pretty rare. You're not going to get that. Somebody's going to notice that. But you'd be surprised because during the game, you're going to focus on offense and defense sort of both at the same time. So I'm constantly looking at what kind of scheme is she running to try to beat me, and then what can I do to sort of trick her and not see what I'm doing. So it's a very competitive head-to-head -head game. I love it. Really, really smart. All right, so let me show you real quick a couple of other tricks here. So if you want to turn the sound off, maybe it's late at night and the kids are sleeping, you don't want all the noises going, the way you do that is hold down any corner button for a couple of seconds, and it's going to turn off the audio. So that's good. Now it's going to be quiet. If you'd like to play against the computer, I'll just show you how to do the, uh, the lights out game. So let me do that on easy. Now lights out's a different game. What it does essentially is it lights up a couple of tiles like this. And if you tap this tile, all the tiles that are touching it are going to turn the other direction. So if it's on, it's going to be off. Now in this case, this one's on, this one's off, this one's off, this one's off. When I tap that, this one, this one, this one will come on and these two will go out. But the challenge is to get all of these off, so you can see how complex it gets pretty quickly. So if I tap that one, well, that's pretty easy. I'm in easy mode. If I tap that, they're all going to go off, and I've won the game, so that's good. Uh, but it gets much more complex. As you get better, the computer gets better and becomes more challenging. I promise you, again, with Lights Out, if you start that medium mode, you're going to spend hours trying to beat this thing. And for me, that conceptually, it's a two-dimensional version of sort of that slide tile game that you play. But it is interesting because you have to think about... How do those moves affect your next move, and can I sort of work those lights into a corner and shut them all off at the same time? So I do like the lights out game, but my passion is really around that Connect Four side, especially head to head, because I know that when I sit down at the end of the evening with my wife to play that game, she's thinking, I'm taking this guy down. And I'm thinking the exact same thing. So there's a lot of smack talking going on, the little bowl of candy going at the same time. But I'm telling you, I love this game, not only because of the gameplay, because it's really exciting, but that three-dimensional aspect of it really just taxes your brain. So it relaxes you, but it makes you really think and, and really stretches that gray matter a little bit. I hope that was helpful, and I love this game. And I know I've said it a couple of times before, I play a lot of board games. There's other games here that I could talk about, but this one in particular, it's a brand new game. It's a little more expensive than other games, but remember, you're buying a game that's got a computer built into it. It can connect to the internet, so it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but ever since we started playing this, it hasn't left the game table. It may go to a chair, and we'll bring up Sequence, or we'll bring up Rummy Cube or something else to play it for a while, but eventually those slide to the side, we pick this up and start playing it again, and we're not tired of it. We're just having a lot of fun. And again, it's one of those games that seems really simple when you first start playing it, but it's incredibly complex because of the third dimension. You've got to think in three dimensions, which is so wonderful. Anyway, I've got links below if you want to check it out on Amazon. I love reviewing technology, and you know these Gadget Friday clips are a little bit funnier, a little bit more uh, interesting, I think, for me, where I can talk about things outside of the normal technology, and I hope you're enjoying them. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay nerdy!